Hi. So it's time to do the drawers. What's kind of nice, I can use the, I can start with the scraps from the backs of the cabinets to start making the drawers because they're, they're, they are both from half inch pieces of birch plywood. So that's what I'm going to make the drawers out of. So we've got lots and lots of drawers to make. <laughs> So the drawers are going to be three different heights. There'll be a, a, a deep drawer on the bottom and then a sort of medium deep drawer in the middle and then a shallower drawer at the top. And they'll all be the same all the way around the kitchen. So I have three different widths to cut as far as strips go. Once I finished with the scrap pieces, I then needed to use a few new pieces of half inch plywood. I think three, possibly two, I can't remember now. Once I had all the strips cut, I could then start cutting those to width. Now I have two different dimensions on each drawer. I have the depth of the drawer and then the width of the drawer. And the, the depth of the drawer just kind of has to fit within the cabinet. It doesn't have to be real precise, but the width has to be perfect. The drawer slides take up an inch, so the, the width of each drawer has to be one inch less than the width of the space within the cabinet that it needs to fit within. When I was cutting these, I was thinking I was going to make box joints to hold the drawers together. And in doing it that way, the, the length of each piece could be the length that the drawer is going to have to be because the box joint doesn't take up any extra width. But after making a little jig and after doing some practicing and making a joint, it really looked like it was just going to take too long cutting all those little pieces out. It was going to be really hard to keep them accurate with a little simple jig. Like I would need to really build a full sled and really do it right to make this work. And I really didn't have time for that. So I went back to the joint I've done in the past, which is cutting a dado into the side and then a rabbit into the front and back. And that rabbit fits into the dado of the side. So that when you're pulling and pushing on the drawer, you're pulling and pushing against wood and not just glue and nails. So I had to cut the fronts and backs down by about half an inch. In this joint, the front and back don't come all the way to the outside of the sides. So I cut the dados in those, and there needs to be a dado along the bottom edge for the bottom of the drawer to sit in as well. And I needed to cut a rabbit on the ends of the sides of the drawers that'll go into the dado that's on the front of the back. Then the next thing to do is to cut the bottoms for the drawers. So it was back to big sheets of plywood to make those. And in doing this, I'm beginning to question the reasoning for having the two table saws back to back because I couldn't keep the dado set up while I was trying to cut big panels on the other saw. So it really wasn't helping having the two different saws. It, wouldn't, it would have been just as easy to just have the one. The, the bigger saw that I'm using here, I found actually cuts the plywood nicer. It leaves a nicer finish on the, on the cut or on the, the edge of the cut, I guess. There, there's very little tear out with this blade. And my dado blade that I've had for like a decade now, I think, and I've never had sharpened, still cuts great and doesn't leave any tear out. It's really nice. So it, it's good to put a feather board on here to hold the workpiece down. Because if it lifts up while you're doing a dado, your dado is not as deep. And then doesn't really work <laughs> as a dado. So the bottoms need a rabbit all the way around on all four sides. And then that'll fit into the sides and front and back of the drawers. So when, when putting this together, I can actually use the bow in the plywood bottom to hold that piece in place. This is kind of nice. It's really good to dry fit this together before I do any glue. Make sure everything goes together. It's kind of a wooden puzzle. <laughs> 
Now I did do something that gains me a little bit of space, a little bit of volume, but I think it makes the bottom a little bit weaker where I have the rabbit on the bottom fits into the dado in the sides and then the extra bit of wood in the bottom points down. And what that does is it means the strength of the bottom is dependent on the glue and the plywood at that edge. Instead of flipping the bottom over and having the mass of the bottom point up. And I would lose a little bit of volume in the drawer, but it would be a little bit stronger bottom. Because then the, the edge strength is based on the wood that's fitting into the dado. And not the glue between the sheets of plywood, if that makes sense. <laughs> So I found what worked with the assembly was to dry fit everything together and then pull the front and back off and sort of fold them down onto the table and then put glue into the dado and then sort of fold the front and back back up again onto the drawer and then clamp everything together. And that seemed to work and it meant I didn't have all of the pieces all kind of separate and all kind of fumbling around with glue and trying to put it together. I just had the, the one piece at a time to deal with. So when I've laid out drawers in the past, I've gotten questions on how to space them. So I have a model in the computer and I have it figured out there. But at this point, it, it also makes sense just to lay it out as it actually exists. So I measured the height of the cabinets and I put a piece of tape down and I have a stick that's that height. And I know I wanted an inch at the top and then I wanted and then I wanted half an inch at the bottom. So I just put the top and the bottom shelf there. So then it's really it's just the middle shelf. So there's really only one variable. So I just spaced it to where these were even and it's about two and five eighths or so. I, I think in my model, it, the, these were two inches. I'm not sure why it's so much bigger, but at this point it doesn't really matter. So then on my stick, which will become my jig, to put the slides in, I can just mark where the drawers are gonna be. So then that will get me started with making the jig, which is based on this, which is based on the cabinets. And hopefully, in the end, the drawers will have this spacing in the cabinets. <laughs> and when you're doing drawers where the faces are separate, which is how I'm doing it, the spacing of where the drawers are can, doesn't really need to be perfect because the faces will hide, hide that spacing. So then I can transfer these marks. Now I'm going to I'm going to come down half an inch because that's the half an inch I have at the bottom. So this this lower mark that's half an inch down that's where my horizontal piece that's going to hold hold the slide up while I screw it into the cabinet. So these are approximately the depth of the cabinets. And they definitely don't have to be perfect. I just need to line up these marks and then they'll be level. Or at least they'll be parallel with the bottom of the cabinet. <laughs> so we have a jig. <laughs> and then you can see how the jig goes into the cabinet. And I can just kind of clamp that in place real quickly. Now most Pretty much all slides I've ever installed come apart. There's usually a little thing that, a little clip that lets you pull the two halves apart. So this, this half goes on the drawer and then this half goes in the cabinet. What I'm gonna do is add this shim, I guess I'd call it, under both halves, both the half on the drawer and that'll, that'll raise the slide up on the side of the drawer. And this little spacer was sort of arbitrary. I think I made it an inch and a half, which felt about right. You could really make it whatever. In fact, you could make it zero and not have it, but. Now I can take the same jig and flip it to the other side. And 
the slides on the other side of the drawer will be exactly the same height. So then the, the slides go in, and they go in pretty quickly with the jig. You just you just throw them in place and screw them screw them in. Um, the screws I have are self tapping, I guess is what you'd say. So you, so they don't need a hole. You can just put them in and just drill them into place. Now the moment of truth. Ow. <laughs> Now, the moment of truth. So I got these soft close slides, which I've never used before. They, they seem like a good idea. When they work, they seem really nice, but it looks like you have to get that half inch on each side exactly perfect. There's, there's no play like there is with other slides that I've used. The, the wider drawers that I thought were gonna be trouble came out perfect and that, those closed really nicely. So those, those were the drawers, um, and they're mostly done. <laughs> so I'm hoping next week to get to the, the faces that'll go on the front, so they'll look more finished, hopefully. And then once, once that's on, we can take everything upstairs into the kitchen. So it's getting, it's getting close. <laughs>